Tam episode sure jay take facts cut at you and gilg chenya namara mavalya manen de mi fortunach haran machara ila chen der achen hed der re jane fishin shaw machen vaisho mach tammy malomakan uh faster my mish max tammy vosh the isle of man i oh, forget it we'll just do it in english Beryllium is a bit weird. By atomic number, it's one of the first ten elements on the periodic table, which puts it in the same row as some of the most useful elements in the universe. Carbon makes up the chemical backbone of every living creature in existence, nitrogen accounts for over 70% of the Earth's atmosphere, and oxygen is an element so important that you literally couldn't breathe in and out without it. Well, you could, just not for very long. But despite this impressive pedigree, beryllium just isn't as useful as its brothers and sisters. For one, it's enormously toxic, and strict safety measures have to be in place if you ever need to use it in a lab. Beryllium and many of its compounds are carcinogenic, which means they can cause cancer in human tissue, particularly after repeated exposure. If breathed in, tiny amounts of beryllium dust can permanently damage the cells of your respiratory system and lead to a life-threatening lung condition known as beryliosis. That's right, first fun fact of the day, to the best of my knowledge, beryllium's one of the only elements in existence to have a respiratory disease named after it. I'm not even at the first paragraph of my script, I mean look at this thing. If you wanted to edit it, you need a Molotov cocktail in one hand and a vial of holy water in the other. Pure beryllium is a grey, brittle metal, but it only occurs in nature as a component atom in crystals. The most well-known of these is the beryl family of minerals, from which beryllium and several old ladies takes its name. There are many different types of beryl, but the ones we'll be focusing on are the emeralds, gemstones renowned for their brilliant green colour, which comes from trace amounts of chromium and vanadium in their chemical structures. Gram for gram, emeralds are rarer on earth than diamonds, and have been coveted by both jewellers and anthropomorphic hedgehogs since the time of the ancient Egyptians. The discovery that emerald was a subcategory of beryl was made by the French mineralogist René Just Aoui, as in, Francois, you weren't in there long, I know, it was just Aoui. For realising the similarities between the two metals, Aoui enlisted the help of the chemist Louis-Nicolas Vacalan, who had discovered the element chromium a few months before. Vacalan confirmed there was a new element in Emerald's crystal structure, and was able to extract small amounts of beryllium oxide from a sample in 1798. The new element was initially named glucinium, due to the sweet taste of its compounds. This name fell out of favour in the 20th century, when chemists realised it wasn't a good idea to encourage people to taste something that was about as safe to consume as a mug full of cancerous wasps. Purification processes for beryllium have existed since the 50s, but it never exactly set the chemical world on fire, in part because there's just not that much of it to work with. As explained before, elements like carbon, hydrogen and oxygen make up some of the most abundant elements on the planet, and some of the most abundant elements in you for that matter. But when you compare it side by side with the other light elements, beryllium is pretty hard to come by. Most of its ores are pretty rare, and even when you manage to find them, extracting workable amounts of beryllium from them can be a massive pain. Every extraction route for beryllium in the chemical literature involves at least one of the following. High temperatures, dangerous reagents, or a healthy chance of giving the chemists in your research group a one-way ticket to Tumor Town, USA. Even if you succeeded in getting your hands on beryllium, its aforementioned toxicity greatly hampers how it can be transported and handled. The health and safety mine fuel associated with beryllium production has made it much more expensive to purify than other metals, and most manufacturers have diverted their attention away to make nicer things, you know, like candy floss or Anne Hegarty novelty pillows. At time of writing, only three countries have functioning beryllium plants, China, the United States, and Kazakhstan? Yeah, apparently they inherited the old Soviet stockpile of beryllium or after the USSR Gorbacheved itself out of existence. Who knew, eh? So if beryllium is cheap, quenchingly poisonous, expensive to purify, and harder to find than a state school graduate at a young conservatives conference, why is it even being produced on an industrial scale at all? The answer is largely down to two of its properties, its density, and more importantly, its low absorption for x-rays, high frequency bursts of electromagnetic radiation used in hospitals to detect internal injuries. If you expose most metals to a beam of x-ray radiation, most of the beam's energy will be absorbed by the metal before it passes through on the other side. But with beryllium, a low-density metal with exceptionally small nuclei, the x-ray will merrily pass through like a knife through a thin metallic caterpillar cake. As a result, beryllium is a common component in x-ray tubes, and can be found in small quantities in most hospital x-ray machines. Beryllium has also found a bit of a niche in the music industry, specifically as a component in top of the Line loudspeakers. The main metal used in speakers is titanium, an element I should point out is non-toxic, cheaper, and far easier to work with than the star of this video. Now, I don't actually have a beryllium speaker, so I couldn't tell you if it's worth the investment, but the hefty price tag alone has attracted its fair share of risky business. In the 2000s, a Chinese manufacturer was caught lying about using beryllium in their high-end product so they could artificially jack up the price. At least, I think they did. I couldn't find the company's name in the paper I'm referencing, and the author didn't get back to me, so who knows? Maybe the paper was just a plant by Big Titanium. Or I'm dumb. That too. So there you have it, ladies and gents. If you want to get an X-ray, listen to funky music or develop a life-threatening lung condition, you know which element to turn to. Beryllium's yet to really take off, but I think it has potential. Not the first time someone's turned a profit off something toxic and hard to work with. I mean, worked for Katie Hopkins' manager.